everybody, I hope that you're well. My name is Christiane and welcome to my channel Backpacking Bananas and welcome to Montenegro. This is the start of a brand new series. So yesterday I flew into the capital city of Podgorica or Podgorica. I haven't quite figured out how to say that yet um, and I stayed the night just in a little apartment near the airport last night and today I'm heading to Couture but let me tell you my introduction to Montenegro this morning has just been a wild ride quite literally so there's no Ubers or um, like any car lift sharing platform here and so I walked out of my hotel which wasn't a hotel because it was like apartment so there was no reception or anything uh, and I went to hail down a taxi and this guy in a taxi car came to pick me up and then he was, was like, where are you going? And I was like, oh, I'm going to the bus station. He was like, okay, let's go. So we were in the car, he was going mega fast and I noticed that there was no like meter in this uh, taxi or at least, yeah, I just couldn't find it. And I was like, oh, how much is this gonna be? And he goes, money? No, no need for money. This isn't even my car. This is my brother's car. And then he like in, with broken English was just basically saying like how he was just driving around his brother's car and he was driving like a maniac, mega fast. We were going around the roundabouts like <laughs> And I was just like sitting there bracing myself. And he was like, don't worry, don't worry. I have experience in motocross. It's all good. And I was just like, okay, okay. And he was telling me his name. And anyway, um, he was actually really lovely and dropped me at the bus station. And, um, and that was it. And he, and he didn't ask for any money whatsoever. He was really kind. And I was like, okay, welcome to Montenegro. <laughs> So, didn't spend any money on that and um, I just bought a ticket at the bus station to go to Qatar. Funnily enough, there was literally, I looked online, it said that there were no buses to Qatar today and I was so confused because I was like, oh no, like it's a Sunday. Um, but then, and I and I had already booked my accommodation so I messaged my accommodation and I was like, hey, like, can I move my booking for tomorrow? I can't find a bus there today. And he goes, who told you that? He goes, of course there's buses, they run like every half an hour. I was like. Oh. So then I went to the bus station and I did indeed see that they run every half an hour. So I guess the first thing that I've learned in Montenegro is not to trust the websites and to go to the actual bus station to see if the buses are running. Uh, so I can go today. I bought my ticket. It was eight euros and I am about to get on it in the next, um, in the next 20 minutes and head to my first destination. <laughs> Welcome to Couture, ladies and gentlemen. It took just about two hours to get here on the bus. It was a really simple bus journey, to be honest. And now I've just had a look on Google Maps and it looks like my accommodation is only like a five minute walk from the bus stop. So I'm not gonna get a taxi. I'm just gonna walk there. And uh, yeah, we'll be there soon. looks like I'm walking into a, a video game or something like Temple Run um, but this is literally the commute to the hostel because it's in the old town it's called um, Couture Old Town Hostel and it was recommended to me by several people which is why I'm staying there okay so I've just checked in lovely man called Milan told me everything and there's a lot to know um, what is great about this hostel um, is that they organize so many tours and I think that that's going to be a great opportunity for me to meet people because I don't know anyone currently but I've just come into my dorm room and I'm very very pleased because I have a bottom bunk there's currently including me only three people in this six bed dorm so maybe other people will arrive in the afternoon let me have let me show you um, so this is the bunk that I've got, number six, and then there is four bunks this side, and over here you can see it looks out, I don't know if you can see, but there's a pool down there. I'm going to go explore that in a little bit. And then the bathroom is just out here. Looks nice enough. Um, it's slightly concerning that there's only one toilet, one shower and one sink for this dorm room, for our dorm room and for presumably this dorm room as well. So I feel like there might be a little bit of queuing to have a shower at some point. But we'll see, we'll see. Also note that they've given us a nice bath towel, a sheet, 
you've got plug sockets just there, a light, um, obviously own shelf and looks like a little hook underneath as well, and a curtain. We love to see it. This dorm bed was quite expensive actually. It uh, For three nights it was 60 euros, so 20 euros per night to stay in this dorm bed, which I feel like for Montenegro is expensive, but I can already see that this is a really good quality hostel, so it makes sense. Right, what to do now? It's 3.36. There's no one in my dorm room. I'm not like absolutely gagging to meet people straight away. That's just because I, I've got three nights here. So I know I will meet people eventually. I might take a little stroll around the town and just see what's close by. Um, or maybe I'll go bathe by the pool. Hmm. Hmm. All the options. I'll tell you what I'll do first. I'm going to unpack. I love this hostel looker. Have a look at this. It's so big and it just slides out and I've just been able to completely unpack all of my things so I can well it may look like a mess to you but to me this is like an organized mess and I can I know where everything is and I can find it very easily and pick it out obviously because I'm here for three nights um, it's just nice to be able to unpack and then you can just slide it away everything stays stays neat in the dorm room and voila everyone it's a new day in Montenegro I'm feeling not so fresh went on an unexpected night out last night but alas today um, I'm here with some two new friends we've got James and we've got Ava and we are off on a hike one of the smaller hikes we believe in the area um, we're gonna be going up the ladder of Couture to St. John's Fortress and apparently there is a cheese shop along the way and apparently also there are two entrances to this hike one you have to pay for and the other one you don't have to pay for we are of course going for the one that you don't have to pay for but so far like two minutes in it is absolutely stunning oh cool Look at this, on the top of the hill, there's a cheese shop. It literally says cheese shop in Google Maps, which is why we walked in this direction. Okay, we've now left the cheese shop, had some very nice cheese and prosciutto and Turkish coffee. And now we are heading up to St. John's Fortress. This view! Wow, over the whole Bay of Couture. We actually have no idea what this cruise ship is doing. I took a little time lapse when we were in the cheese shop. It seemed to like do a little dance. I don't know what it was doing. If you're in Couture, I highly recommend doing this hike up to St. John's Fortress. So worth it. The view at the top is just incredible. And look at these with the mountains in the background as well. <laughs> James just max and relaxing as he comes down. It was about 250 meters in elevation gain to get to the top. It took us 45 minutes to get to the top. That I paused it when we uh, were sitting down at the cheese shop, but it did include the cheese shop detour. Everyone's just gathering in the common area so we're about to go on a boat party.
morning everybody it's a new day in Montenegro I was so tired after the boat trip yesterday literally just went straight back to the hostel a lot of people carried on partying um, we went to bed <laughs> and today there was a lot of contemplating this morning as to what we were going to do and what seemed to make the most sense and I'm with the gang I'm with James Ava and Lee and we have rented a car today because we just thought there's like a town called Budva, there is Lofsen and a mausoleum, several places that we've heard about and you can get there on public transport but it would be a bit more faffy, you have to wait for buses and because there's four of us, why not rent a car? It costs 50 euros for the car rental so 12.50 each for 24 hours so we'll have it this afternoon and we'll have it tomorrow morning as well. So yeah, that's what we're going to do for the next 24 hours and our first stop We've come to Budvar and we've come to a place called Jazz Beach. And this is it. Oh, the water looks stunning. It's been so hot today. I was so sweaty in the dorm room. And so I cannot wait to jump in this water. So on Jazz Beach, you can see in the distance, there's an aqua park. It costs five euros for 30 minutes. We may be the only adults going on, but that's okay. We're gonna go in. That was a wild time on the aqua park and we're now gonna head actually into Budva, probably their old town for some lunch. these bureks for lunch, two euros. Typical in Croatia and Montenegro, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Bosnia. In Bosnia. I love the fact that there are these public water fountains pretty much all over Montenegro and the old towns. Very good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try the rosé? It's really nice. I really like that a lot. I don't really like wine. Oh, but you like that. Oh, okay. So we found a good winery, guys. The name of this is Vinariga Vuk Mirovic. Yes. I'll link it in the description. Definitely recommend coming here. It's so good. So we're buying two of the wines that were our favourite. So we're getting the sparkling red, which is a little bit unique. And there's a litre, that was 10 euros. Uh, it's a very fat bottle. And then we also got the rosé, um, which was actually delicious. Probably one of my favourite rosés that I've ever tasted. And this whole winery is award winning. So, this was also 10 euros. Both those bottles of wine for 20 euros. I think that's a pretty good deal. So now we're just gonna have a little wander around the winery before we leave. It's been a quick whistle stop because it's been unexpected. We've got to get to a viewpoint before sunset. We don't have that much longer before the sun actually sets. So, I'll put these in the car and we'll uh, have a little wander. The whole thing is theirs. How beautiful. Look at that view. Okay, we've been driving, just plodding along these windy country roads and I think we have found the best viewpoint in all of Montenegro. Prove me wrong, but have a look at this. Look at that, just amazing. You can take little, uh, little river cruises down here. Well, this is Lake Skidar. 
which is the biggest lake in Montenegro, I believe. It's amazing. So our final stop of the day. We don't think we have time to do all of Love Send, so we're going to do that in the morning. But we've come about halfway up. There's Couture down there. The sunset. Wow. What a view. So we're going to come up here again in the morning and I guess it will look slightly different, but it's pretty spectacular. Nothing ever felt as good or as easy as when we were young. Oh, oh, oh. Though I felt misunderstood, it was a pleasure running away. Okay, it's the next day. We did actually try going somewhere this morning in the car, but the rain just started. It was absolutely chucking it down. And so we kind of just called off any plans we had. We plan on doing like the Blue Caves, like um, boat tour around um, to Parast and some other places in the kind of Couture area. Unfortunately, we did have to sack them off because of the weather, but such is life. It's time to move on. So now back at the Couture bus station and heading on to the next destination, which will be revealed in the next video. I'm going to end the vlog here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel um, if you haven't already. My first impressions of Montenegro have been great quite honestly, exceeded any expectations that I had. Like I I was hoping it would be nice. I'd seen photos of Couture, but in reality, I didn't really know that much, but it really has exceeded any expectations I've had. Like the road trip we went on yesterday was insane and it just really made me go, wow, there is way more to this country than I feel like most people even know about. It's a real, I feel like it's a real hidden gem of the Balkans because it's not as talked about as a country like Croatia. The next vlog is also going to be in Montenegro, but less on the coast, more in the mountains. Um, so I will catch up with you in that video. Um, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. I was facing all the sunlight.